Describe the first time you met Nicole. First time I met Nicole was probably Amateur Nationals, 2001 or two. She was riding 80 and she had these big old ugly glasses. Describe the first time you met Jared. Uh, we were at um, a race in New York and I was a pro-am rider. He was in the expert class. And we went out for our heat race and um, it was a dash for cash, I'm sorry. And uh, I went out there and beat him. And uh, he's like, man, when you pass me, I was hoping you'd pass everybody. And I wanted his poster, so I went over to get his poster, and uh, it kind of disconnected there. Um, he said, you can only have this poster if you give me a kiss. What was your first impression of Nicole the first time you met her? Uh, just some overrated uh, motorcycle chick. What do you think his first impression of you was? Um, obviously, Obviously, he liked me. What do you think her first impression of you was? Some overrated young up-and-coming Pennsylvania kid. I always liked him. We didn't really talk back at amateur nationals a whole lot. Um, I always seen him around and I'd always point out to like my cousins, Oh look, he's so cute, blah blah blah. Describe your first kiss. Oh, I remember it exactly. This is classic. She's probably going to laugh at this. I, uh, we were at Oklahoma City, like 2001 or two, and she came up to me and she was like, I want one of your posters before I leave. So I had it all figured out. I, I autographed this poster and put it in my box truck that I was riding for at the time, Johnny Goode's box truck. When she came and got it, I got her in a box truck and I gave her it and we started, you know, making out the whole deal. So it worked out perfect. My plan was perfect. Where was your first kiss? Um, in New York at a uh, racetrack. Um, they don't race there anymore. It was at a Formula USA race back in the day. What's her favorite color? Pink for sure. Hot pink or pink. What is Jared's favorite color? Um, I'm gonna guess blue. I guess we never really talked about favorite colors. I uh, I'm mix everything. Blue, I don't the orange, whatever. I'm not a big color guy. Who controls the remote? Definitely me. Unless it's Monday nights and she'd want to watch her Lifetime, you know, Lifetime movies or whatever. We do compromise on one show we used to watch. It was this uh, gymnastic show. Kind of felt a little bit of like a fairy about watching this show together, but uh, it was actually pretty interesting. It was like competition, but it's not on anymore for some reason, so we don't really compromise on too much more. She watches her Lifetime every once in a while and uh, make it a, or uh, what's it called, Secret Teen or something like that. If that Secret Teen shows on, I can't touch that remote. But other than that, the remote's mine. We don't really watch a whole lot of TV, um, but when we do, he's always in control and he sucks at it because he flips through the stations <laughs> the whole entire time. We don't ever watch a full TV show or movie. <laughs> Describe Nicole in one word. Laid back. What would he um, use to describe you in a word or two or three? Um, fast and fun. And how do you describe yourself? Um, I like to, I'm caring and compassionate. Um, obviously I'm teaching now and working with kids, so I really like that. And um, I just love being competitive. Describe Jared in one word. Um, energetic or ADHD. How would she describe you in one word? Energetic. How do you describe yourself in one word? Pain in the ass. Um, how do you think Jared would describe his future father-in-law? Um, <laughs> that he likes to party a lot. <laughs> we'll keep it nice and simple. Um, but overall, a, a good guy and uh, you know likes to have fun. There's not one word that, they can, that, that, that can describe Mark Chesa, put it that way. Out of control, wide open, uh, but in, in, he's out, he's, I tell you what, he's got one heck of a heart on him. He's, he's a really good hearted guy, he just uh, got to look past the other stuff. What is your greatest fear? Um, I'm not really fearful, I don't have a lot of fears, but um, you know, Obviously getting married, making the marriage work. A lot of people get divorced these days and uh, I think we have a great relationship. You know, we can uh, keep our race life at the racetrack and go home and um, be 
be a family. So uh, I think that's a great aspect, but definitely, you know, making it last for, you know, so some people come up to us and say, oh, we've been married for 50 years or 60 years, and um, that's obviously my dream, so. Like, what is she scared of? Mm -hmm. She doesn't like snakes or spiders. Definitely not. And what is Jared's greatest fear? Um, <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> What's your greatest fear? My greatest fear? Probably to be not successful. How many kids do you want to have? Uh, probably just one. Um, I, I know our kids will probably be really active in sports, so uh, I want to spoil one. Um, how many kids does Nicole want to have? And that's gonna be the uh, that's gonna be the stopper right there. I don't know. She's uh, she definitely wants to have kids. I'm not really sure. I want to have kids yet, so stay tuned to that one. What is the most embarrassing thing Jared has done since you guys have been together? Ah, uh, Jared does lots of embarrassing things. Um, <laughs> he is very open about everything. Um, one thing that he does. He asked everybody their personal information, you know, how many times they've had sex, when do they do it, uh, what color underwear they're wearing, and he asked that, like, my brother brought his girlfriend over, brand new girlfriend, first time we ever met her, and he's asking her all these questions while we're sitting at the dinner table with my parents. <laughs> so he, um, you know, does that stuff, and he does it in public. It doesn't matter if we're at home, in public. He loves to um, know everybody's personal information. <laughs> He's a gossip queen. The most emba embarrassing thing you've done since you two have been together? I don't know. You can ask a lot of my best buddies. I don't really get embarrassed, so for me, I haven't really done anything that was like too embarrassing. Uh, I, to me, I don't really get embarrassed. It's just the way it is. I think, uh, I couldn't tell you. I really don't know. What about um, Jared annoys you? Um, he leaves all the cupboards open. <laughs> and I get on him all the time. The snack cupboard is always open. It doesn't matter if I close it. Five minutes later, it is back open. <laughs> what do I do that annoys her? Um, probably, like, not pay attention when she's, like, trying to describe uh, I think in two weeks we're going to be doing so, such and such and I'll just be like working on the bikes or just be thinking about this, thinking about this and then all of a sudden the two weeks will come up she'll be like, oh hey, remember tonight? I'll be like, what? No, you never said it. Yes, I did. I told you about it. Yeah. That right there annoys the heck out of everyone. I don't really like comprehend what she's saying but I had a learning disability in school so I kind of have a little bit of an excuse for it. What about Nicole annoys you? What about Nicole annoys me? When she doesn't answer her phone, like she'll have a cell phone and she'll be somewhere and I'll be trying to get a hold of her, trying to get a hold of her, trying to get a hold of her. And then like like after eight times I try to call her, she'll, she'll come back in her car. Oh, I left my phone in my car. That one there, definitely. What do you do to annoy Jared? Um, I like to nitpick at him and he is really good at dishing it out, but he's not really good at taking it. And um, when did you know Jared was the one? Um, pretty much from from the first time he started staying with us. He came and stayed with us, um, I guess it was maybe 2003, um, to go to a race in Michigan. And uh, he pretty much stayed there forever, you know. He never really went back home just to visit and stuff. Um, and from there, you know, we had a great connection and we just knew we, we were right for each other. When did you know she was the one? Um, when she passed me at Rochester, uh, New Hampshire, like back in 2003, it's like, man, I gotta get a hold of that girl. And why did you guys decide to get married here at the Farragons? Like, what's the real reason? Um, Jared proposed to me here, and then uh, we thought it'd be really cool to, uh, you know, have our family, friends, and all our fans involved in the marriage. Um, this is what we both love to do is go racing, so what better place to, you know, have your wedding at at the racetrack. What um, is the real reason you decided to get married here at the Fairgrounds? Well, we were looking at, of course, the cost effective of getting married is so high. And uh, at first I was like pumped up to just go in, uh, to Hawaii and get married low key or whatever. And 
and she was like, well, I want my family there, which I understand, and it just got to be pretty costly to have everybody at Hawaii or something, and then we were looking at halls and all kinds of stuff at, uh, in Michigan, Flint there, around that area, and it just by it, we added everything up, and like to have half the people to be there was way more money, so we were like, brought this idea up, and at first she was like, I'm not getting married at the racetrack, I'm not getting married at the racetrack. Well. I asked, we said something to like two or three people and everybody was like, man, this is awesome. That's a good idea. This is great. All of a sudden she just fell for it. So it's usually like you got to, you know, bait the hook. You know, you got to tell a couple other people think it's a really good idea. Because so it comes like right from your future husband or wife already learned this. It's not a good idea. It's a terrible idea. But if her best friend thinks it's a great idea, it's a great idea. And you're a poor dirt tracker, right? And we're a poor dirt tracker, so we're doing everything we can, you know, to make it.